My name is Ben Hack and I have Asperger's. Before diagnosis, I was nothing according to society. Mainstream education struggles with us. Mainstream sport definitely struggles with us. We are in the whole world's too hard basket. Ever since the age of 17, I've been fighting back and I still fight back. Through Special Olympics, I have become a voice for others. Get this hip around, see if we can see what's wrong with this eye. He's a farm boy from Queensland. In the past 10 years, he's found himself traveling the world with Special Olympics. He's now a respected voice for other people living with intellectual disability. I live with my uh, family, uh, my mum and my dad. We live on a 14-acre um, farm. It's a place called Gilston. So it's more of the hinterland area of the Gold Coast. We've been here for about, probably about 15 years. I want to go up to you and just check that fence on that. <coughs> Ooh. I like uh, quiet sort of places. Uh, always have and I think most people with Asperger's are, are like that and I think it's simply because um, yeah for us interacting with people can sometimes be really difficult and really challenging so as a result particularly when we're younger like I was when I was undiagnosed you tend to naturally gravitate towards quiet sort of places it's just a way of kind of escaping from a lot of that this works around the tree here. You hop around on that uh, dead tree there, because you yep. haven't got the gun bits on. I have a thing called hypersensitivity, and wh what that is is uh, it's kind of like your senses are more kind of switched on a little bit, so you hear things a lot louder, you smell things a lot more, more than other people do. And um, particularly when you're stressed, that kind of becomes a bit heightened. And basically what it means is that Noisy places can be really stressful to you. You can pick up on a whole lot of things that a whole lot of people can't, so it kind of magnifies everything. And if you find it very stressful, because it's really loud. It's, it's more loud than for other people, so it kind of looks a bit strange, but that's what it is. I do have difficulties dealing with other people and other people have difficulties dealing with me. I have difficulties picking up on jokes. I have difficulties picking up on emotion. I have difficulties picking up on different social settings. So generally I do like my own quiet time, particularly at home, either in my room or down the paddock kicking a ball. Right at the very beginning, Ben had everything. He had uh, really no speech. He was a chronic stutterer. Um, and when we first had him assessed, he was behind in all gross motor and fine motor activities. So we did a lot of occupational therapy to bring his levels back to a normal degree. Um, one of the other things was Ben kept walking on his tiptoes. So they were at one stage going to cut both Achilles and to bring it down. So we had a very small six month window of a lot of concentrated exercise to bring the feet back down. Had they done the surgery, Ben wouldn't have been able to play football. Sport opened his world. So he had lots of um, issues, we had lots of doctors, but all fragmented because there was no di diagnosis, so we just kept on, on a quick little journey all the way through. Um, but amazingly got all the levels back up to normal. As a kid, what Ben needed was understanding. But without a diagnosis, the teachers just thought he was misbehaving. Thank <laughs> you. 
first 16, 16 and a half years of my life were very hard because um, <clears throat> I copped a lot of bad treatment, a lot of bullying and mistreatment and that sort of stuff. And it was a very confusing and frightening and very difficult time because with my disability, I didn't really know how to behave or how to act. You become a target, unfortunately, for bullying because of the fact that you just don't really know how to behave. You don't understand jokes. You don't understand body expression. You don't really get what's going on. You're slow to pick things up. Sometimes your behaviour can seem a bit strange. I got peed on when I was in primary school. I got bashed up quite a few times, quite a few times in toilets, got food thrown at me. I uh, had a teacher who basically made me sit in the corner for an entire year at school. In high school, he got really, really um, attacked by some students and his nose was broken and that's how we got the diagnosis that day. Um, ben was really bashed and the school rang. Ben actually, ben actually fought back and that's the only time that he really has fought back. Um, bad news is you need to get him to a doctor. I think the nose is really smashed. So um, in the car on the way, that's when Ben was totally withdrawn and bleeding and he said to me, Mum, I deserve everything. The kids are right, I'm nothing but a piece of shit and I deserve everything. Ben's mum, Cheryl, was desperate for help. She didn't know why her son was being bullied. Worse, she didn't know what she could do to help him. And I don't, don't really know how I kept it together, but um, I just did and I just turned. I always remember, you have turning points and that was my turning point. And I just said, nobody on this earth deserves the kind of treatment you've received, but we will fix it from now. The school that I was involved in started to notice my behaviour and what was going on with me. And then what they decided to do was um, bring someone down who is a, you know, a person who diagnoses people with disabilities and she observed me in the classroom and um, made some recommendations. I went, I went to see a doctor and then I got diagnosed. Part of me always felt I was different, so part of me did understand it, but I did go through a bit of shock for a while because it's, it's a difficult thing to kind of comprehend that all of a sudden now you've got a disability and now you're different, you know, and, and I suppose for a while you're kind of like struggling to understand it and grasp it, and uh, you kind of feel a bit isolated. Cheryl was desperate to find one place that Ben could belong. We really, we, we put Ben into a lot of sport because we are both sporty people. Some of the options we chose were not good options like rugby league um, because Ben's a big boy, they put him in the front row. Um, not knowing that he's autistic and doesn't like close contact, that was never going to work. Most of the time, Ben was relegated to the bench. A lot of the defence things that he does is very, very insular, very to himself, was because of what happened in school. So Ben used to, I call it, think the worst first. So if he got confused, he would think the worst because that's what he was programmed to do. And Mum just basically rung around a whole bunch of different places trying to find programs or things for me to do. And she found an organisation called Gold Coast Rec and Sport I went into there to have an interview and went in there and started doing some of their sports programs. And then the, that's when I found out about Special Olympics, that they have Special Olympic programs. Ben started playing football and was hooked. Soon he was representing Australia at the Special Olympics World Games. His ball skills improved 
along with his confidence. It was the first kind of time that I was respected and kind of was treated in a very respectful fashion. Um, you know, when you join Special Olympics, you become an athlete and you truly become an athlete, which is something very rare in disability, that you actually get that sort of respect. So that was very life-changing for me and it was really good just to play sport and not sit on the sideline or, you know, be in trouble or anything. With Special Olympics particularly, you have a safety, a safety within the organisation that everybody's there to help you. And that's the reason he's blossoming and, and their respect for him as a person, which he's not had before, allows him to become and to open up and to speak and be passionate. And I think Special Olympics is really the reason Ben is blossoming. Ben's realised his voice is the most powerful tool in making a difference, so he's worked hard to perfect it. Key thing that I try to work on with my speeches is just to really um, come from the point of view of athlete ability and achievement and positivity and really bringing out the message of treating people with respect and dignity and giving them opportunity and choice. That's really the key element for the speeches. And um, I suppose maybe try and relate it to a personal level from my own experiences. It's hard to believe now, but Ben grew up with a stutter. Sometimes you, you do get nervous because sometimes you do speak to some very high up people and you really want to make sure that you, you know, that things work out right and, you know, they understand the message that you're bringing. Okay. As an athlete, the biggest point that I can make is that we want to be treated as athletes, not as people with disabilities. We want to be seen for our abilities, not our disabilities. I know coaches have got the best out of me when they have treated me like an athlete. I feel respected when my coach treats me like an athlete and I can have an honest relationship with them. If a coach is fair income with me and is willing to push me in training and competition, the coach demands the best out of me. Sport improves social skills and the ability to make friends. It creates a place to belong sport can change lives. I've been a coach in Special Olympics and I have worked in the In 2010, Ben was honoured with an invitation to the FIFA World Cup in South Africa. Special Olympics put on an exhibition football match, the Unity Cup. Ben was the athlete leader chosen above all others to sit alongside political leaders and be the voice of people with intellectual disabilities. You know, it's unbelievable. I've been thinking about it for months, so eh? you know, I just it's been going in my head, you know, over and over and it's just you know, last night I was really thinking about it and getting goosebumps and really, really excited and it's just oh <laughs> it's gonna be off the charts. We take this as a very important occasion that during the 2010 FIFA Soccer World Cup, a game that will be played tomorrow <clears throat> by Special Olympics, an important thing because this is um, a movement that addresses an important aspect of our societal life. Uh, it's huge, it's uh, absolutely massive. Um, just, um, I think for probably most athletes, it's going to be an awe-inspiring experience. 
Um, I think um, it's probably something for most, probably to be honest, for most athletes, they wouldn't have thought it was possible, to be quite honest, you know, to actually play at a venue like that before a quarter final. So it's like a real sense of achievement. And um, <coughs> what I'm hoping, and I'm sure the athletes hoping, is a lot of people will be there and will actually see the movement in a, and will actually. Hopefully, through that, we'll advertise the movement and people and break down the barriers. You know, people will see that it's just a bunch of footballers going out there to play football. <laughs> to see the president president of South Africa there. I mean, not just for me, but for the movement was really big. And I think it'll really generate uh, a lot of awareness of the movement. And for me personally, it was just unbelievable to be there, to actually speak about the movement myself in such a big press conference, because this, this event is history making for Special Olympics. It's unity that Ben and Special Olympics are promoting. Right before the quarter-final of the World Cup, Ben takes to the field with celebrities, leaders and other Special Olympics athletes. Uh, yeah, these are all my medals from Special Olympics. I've been involved for about 13 years. Uh, these two are my World Games medals. This one is from Ireland and that one's from Shanghai. This is for the World Cup in India. And these ones are all from the different state games that I've been to. You know, they all represent, you know, some really special moments and, yeah, and magical achievements. It gave him the confidence to get a job. What I do here uh, at Gold Coast Rec is that I'm a staff member. How are you, Matt? Hello. Hi. How are you? Do. Weekend good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what my job is, is I'll, I'll go into programs that they assign me and I'll look after clients, make sure that they're involved in the program, make sure that uh, things are going smoothly, that they're safe and happy and the program's being run well. How are you, Kent? Mm. Bit cold, mate? Hey, jean Juan, how are you? Hey, uh, Schultz, you doing tennis today? Tennis, eh? Hey. Looking forward to that? <laughs> With my disability, I kind of use that as a bit of a gauge. So when I go into a room or work with a group, if I go in there and it's a bit too loud for me or it's a bit too smelly or routine's a little bit out of whack, then chances are if I know there's a whole lot of clients there with autism, for example, then I know they're probably feeling the same sort of thing, maybe even worse than what I do. The noise today is too much for Glenn, one of Ben's regular clients. Ben knows how to put him at ease. Covering his ears helps settle Glenn when there's too much stimulation. Hey, Glenn, say hello. Say hello. Say hello. 
Say hello. Say hello. Glenn, he does have a lot of challenging behaviour and uh, what we've tried to do is we've tried to get him more involved in things and more active in things and and uh, be because he's of his background trying to make sure that he's involved in activities and not just, you know, not involved or lying on the floor. See those balls? Let's go inside. Go inside. Jordan, quiet. No, we don't do that, Glenn. We're going to go inside. Come on, no, we go inside. Let's go. Move away. One, two, three. This way. With him, he's, he can be very headstrong. So with us, it's a case of trying to, I suppose, deal with some of that headstrongness that he has. And uh, he's very cheeky and can be quite a lot of fun to work with. Wait. All the way back. Let's see who's fastest team. Go on, Glenn. Go. Run. Run, Leno. Run, Leno. Hey, 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 hey. No. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. <coughs> oh, Glenno, is it? Is it good? Glenno, you're tagged. Yeah. Hands ready. Hands ready. Catch. Good. No, no, throw it. You know, I still see a lot of people with my disability who get treated just as bad as I did. In fact, in some respects worse because they get thrown around a whole lot of schools. So when you see that sort of thing continuing to happen, it does frustrate you. It does frustrate you at times. And, and I suppose it kind of reminds you of why certain things need to be said and things need to happen. Having passed his apprenticeship in South Africa, Ben was assigned a new mission for Special Olympics headquarters at the World Games in Athens. I'm part of the evaluation team, so what we do is uh, there's five of us and we're five different people from around the world and I'm the athlete representative. And what we do is we go around and we evaluate the entire World Games. We, uh, we make sure that things are run smoothly, that things are safe, that uh, athletes are getting looked after. Accommodation is up, up to scratch. Um, competitions are being run well. Divisioning's been done correctly. The, you know, we look at what's good, and then we also look at what's maybe not so good. And then what we do is we write a report, you know, probably making recommendations and, and suggestions for future games. The open water swimming is a brand new event for the World Games. Ben's the first to evaluate it. Unofficially, 22 minutes, and Andrew is our first ever Special Olympic athlete gold medalist in the 1500. Mostly just observe the spectator area, um, the uh, the athlete area to see whether it was safe, um, see whether the markings were clear, what procedures they have if an athlete is struggling to swim. They round that buoy, they bunch up, looking and fighting for position, trying to find that finish line on the beach. This event gets the thumbs up from Ben. Special Olympics does two things. For the athlete, it, it gives them a chance, it gives them a fair go through sport and also through life. And through that, that they develop better abilities and become more capable. As in both sport and in society, you know, in getting a job or... and also that they're healthier. The other side of it, what I hope, is that 
the stereotypes get removed from people with disabilities. No longer are they seen as incapable. They're seen as capable. They're seen as essentially they're seen as human beings other than disabled. So basically, it's kind of like combining that. Basically, in essence, removing all the issues, hopefully over time, with for people with disabilities, so that basically we can just be integrated into society with everybody else. I am proud of who I am and where I've come in my life and what I have achieved. I am proud of the things that I've overcome and I am accepting and okay with the difficulties and challenges that I, that I have. I definitely feel that I offer a lot in this world, particularly in terms of disability, in terms of understanding and acceptance and definitely for being a voice for others. I'm happy where I've come and what I have achieved and I am happy with who I am and I am happy with myself.